Hi there, welcome back. Today I will show you how to use the AnimCurves modifier in the Fusion page and create a wipe animation effect like we are seeing now. AnimCurves modifier is the most used one in my templates, it's a powerful tool for managing animation timing and curves. Here is a still image on the timeline, open it in the Fusion page. To create a wipe effect, we add a rectangle node as the effect mask input of the media in node. Change both the width and height to 1, so that the whole image is selected in the view. When we move the mask from left to right, we get a wipe effect revealing the image. If we want to wipe at an angle, we rotate the mask. Some parts of the image are cut out because the mask size is too small. We can increase both width and height to something big, like 5. But there is still a problem, because the rotation is based on the center of the rectangle, visually it's really difficult to control where the wipe edge is or at which angle. The rectangle node doesn't have the pivot offset option to adjust this, so we insert transform node after the rectangle node. Select the rectangle node. Change center x to minus 2, so the right edge of the rectangle falls right in the middle. Select the transform node. Now we can use the transform control to move and rotate the mask on the edge. Select both nodes, we can see how this is working in the viewer. When we rotate or move the transform node, the rectangle mask is also moving together. This effect is basically a linear mask that we can use to select one side of an image. Animate the transform center, we will have a wiping animation to reveal the image. Move to the last frame of the clip, mark a keyframe for the center parameter. Move the transform center to the right until the image is completely shown in the view. Go to the beginning, move the mask to the left until the image is gone from the viewer. Another keyframe is created automatically. Play the clip, we have the mask wiping and showing the image. But it's quite boring. If we want to make it more dynamic or change the timing, we will need to open the spline editor and manually adjust the curves. To make these adjustments easier and more controllable, we will use the Anim Curves modifier. When we animated the transform center earlier, a path modifier was also created automatically. We can right-click over the displacement parameter and choose Insert, Anim Curves, which is a normal way to work with Anim Curves modifier. Instead of doing that today, I will show you how I use Anim Curves in my templates. Right-click the path header bar, select Edit Controls. In the Edit Control window, create a new control called Animatin. Type is Number. Change the page to Controls. Set the range from 0 to 1. Select Slide Control as Input Control. View Control to None. We don't need to control it in the viewer. Click OK to confirm. A new control is now added to the Controls page in the Inspector. Similarly, add another control, animate out. Except the name, all other settings are the same as the previous one. Right-click Animate In, choose Modify with Anim Curves. Rename the modifier to Anim Curves In. As we are creating animation based on a clip, we set the source to duration. For the curve option, 
I always set it to easing as default in my templates. With this option, there are two drop downs where we can choose the predefined smooth curves. Make sure the scale is set to the default value 1, it will animate the value from 0 to 1 automatically. For the rest of the parameters, we will leave them as is for now. Now open the path section, remove the animation path from the displacement parameter. Modify it with a simple expression, linked to the value of animatin. Go to the Anim Curve section, select Bounce from the Out list, and play the clip. We now have a smooth wiping and bouncing animation effect. If we want to run animation faster, we can increase the time scale. For example, set the time scale to 2. Play the clip, the animation now runs twice as fast. If we need to change the wiping path, we can use the screen controls to change the start point and end point. We can also publish the points and adjust the points with controls in the inspector. Drag the mouse to select both points. Right click in the viewer, select path 1, polar line. Check the Publishing Path points enabled. Right-click again, choose Publish, Publish Points. Or simply press the shortcut Shift-P to publish the current selected points. Now we can change the points value with controls in the inspector. As we mentioned earlier, Changing the timescale of the anim curves modifier can change the animation speed up. But it's hard to keep the speed consistent when the clip duration changes. Because the scale is always based on the length of the clip, in this case it takes 75 frames to finish animation with the scale set to 2. In order to run the animation at the same speed regardless of clip duration, we would need to set the time in frames instead of adjusting time scales. Open the path section, right click the header and choose Edit Controls. Create a control called Animate in Time. Add to the controls page. Set range from 0 to 100. Input control to slider. Click OK. Repeat the steps and create another parameter called animate out time with everything else set to the same as the previous one. Set both in and out time to 30 frames. In the anim curves in section, modify time scale with the expression shown on the screen. The time scale is now changed to 5. Because the clip duration is 150 frames, and we set the time to 30 frames. Play the clip, the animation finishes at frame 30. As you might have noticed, we also created animate out controls, these will be used to control animate out animations. Right click animate out, modify with anim curves. Rename the curve to Anim Curves Out. Similarly, we change the source and curve options. Check the Invert option to animate the value from 1 to 0. Since this for the animation running at the end, we will need to add some calculations for the timing scale of offset parameters. Modify the offset with a simple expression shown here. In this case, the animation out time was set to 30, out of a total 150 frames, it will offset 0.8 from the beginning when the out animation starts. And change the time scale expression like this.
The scale is changed to 5 as expected. In the path section, change the displacement expression as shown here. Play the clip, it now wipes backward at the end to hide the image. With this approach, we separate the anim curves modifier from the parameter we want to animate. It allows us to reuse the anim curves value on any numeric parameters. For example, we can create a zoom in and zoom out animation at the same time when it wipes in and wipes out. Insert a transform node after the media in node. Modify the size with a simple expression like this. We now have got a more dynamic animation effect. We can also add a bit rotation effect by using a similar expression for the angle parameter. And got something like this. OK, we've created the wipe animation effect. Next we will add a border, as we saw at the beginning. Copy both the rectangle and transform nodes, and paste instances in the node editor. Select rectangle instance. De-instance the border width parameter. Also de-instance the solid option. Change the border width to 0 0.005. Uncheck solid, because we just need a border. Add a background node, change the color to white. Connect the transform instance to the background as mask input. Merge the background to the node tree. We now have a border line, but it doesn't match the image edge, as the image resizes and rotates. Because this transform node transforms output from previous media in node, including the mask effect applied while the background node here is not affected. Instead of the masking directly on the media node, we can connect the mask to the transform node. Check the multiply by mask option in the settings tab of the transform node. OK, the border works now. We can change the border color using the color controls in the background node. Or change the border width with controls in the rectangle instance node. Alright, this is how I use the anim curves to create the wiping effect. As usual you can download through the link in the description below. Once installed, you will be able to use it directly in the edit page. Here are some logos I used in the previews at the beginning. I will demo how to create the wiping on and off effects on multiple clips using the wipe effect. Add the effect to the first clip, and we got the default wiping on and off effect. Turn on the fusion overlay, and change the start and end points so the wipe starts close to the logo. Make a copy of the first clip. Select the next two clips. Press Alt-V to open the Paste Attributes window. Check only the Fusion Effects option. Click Apply. The wipe effect is now applied to both clips with the same settings. Select the second clip. Go to the Effects tab, check the Reverse Wipe option. Now the wipe starts from the right side. 
Because we want to create an effect that looks like wiping and revealing the second logo while wiping off the first one. So we overlap the second one with the first one. The animation time is 30 frames, which is one second in this case. Press shift and left key to move the playhead backward by one second. Align the second clip to the playhead. Now the wiping effects from these two clips are seamlessly working together. Similarly, move the playhead to the beginning of the third clip. Move the last clip back and align with the playhead. OK, this is how to create wiping effects among multiple clips. If needed, we can add more clips and repeat the steps to continue this wipe effect. For example, adding a title clip. Press Alt-V to paste the fusion effect. Align the clip. Reverse the wipe. The title is now added as part of the wiping animation series. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.